What were the highlights from Zoom's earnings? Tom, well, Zoom surpassed even the highest expectations here. Quarterly revenue jumping about 170% to $328 million, profit beating as well, and Zoom projecting sales of as much as $1.8 billion in the fiscal year, which is about twice as much as it forecast in early March. So the key here, Tom, is that the surge in demand during the pandemic, which was no surprise, actually translated into more paying customers. So they are able to turn that hype into sales, which reflects that in just a short span of time, you must become an essential social network, attracting more than 300 million users some days, up from just 10 million in December. And analysts have been astounded by these results, with DTIG analyst Matt Van Viet writing in a note that, quote, we are slightly in awe of the magnitude of the outperformance, even amid all of the tailwinds currently in the market. This company probably has problems that many companies would like to have, I would imagine, uh, I guess one part of the equation. Any, any challenges that stand out to you, Selena, moving forward? Well, the, the, the big question for Zoom, which is free to use for meetings up to 40 minutes, is whether the company can continue to attract this many paying customers and win out competition from the likes of Microsoft, Cisco, and Google. The signs are positive thus far. It's seen a massive increase in paying customers in the past quarter. It said it ended the quarter with about 265,400 customers, which is more than fourfold increase from a year earlier. It also has 759 corporate clients that have spent more than $100,000 on Zoom's products over the last 12 months. So that's also about double from a year earlier. But the other big challenge they face is all the controversy that they've been dealing with over its security practices, especially in the early days of the lockdown in the U.S. So this phenomenon, as I'm sure you've heard of, called Zoom bombing has emerged where trolls have invaded meetings with inappropriate content or to shout profanity. So the company did address that. It's been working on creating tools to prevent virtual attacks, including with the use of these waiting rooms. In addition to that, the company has also come under fire for instances when Zoom calls were routed through servers in China, even when no participant was based there, and users were also unknowingly sending metadata to Facebook when they signed in. So Zoom has ended both of those practices, and it said it promised to continue to boost the platform's privacy and security, but in the coming quarters, this will continue to be an area of focus as well to see how well their new security practices hold up.